players they have studied in detail. Um, let's just explain very briefly what the opening uh, was here, the open Spanish. Um, we see the Spanish opening with White's bishop coming in, putting some pressure on the black knight. And uh, after a few turns here, um, instead of, for example, the archangel, which would involve in the next few moves putting the black bishop on c5, instead of the classical Spanish, uh, which is uh, putting the black bishop on e7, we see an immediate capture in the center, leading to very open positions, hence the name. Um, we see d4, white trying to open lines up uh, to gain compensation for the temporarily sacrificed pawn. Black kicks the white bishop back, and uh, now black happily returns the pawn to block the center and uh, regain some development. And uh, queen to e2, not the most popular move, but uh, still a well-known one. The idea is to put pressure along the d-file, uh, Prague castles, and there's actually a variety of moves here for white. Uh, we see on the side of our screen, it's not an eval bar, but the uh, percentage win rate for either side here. Uh, white has won 35% of these positions, uh, black has 17%, so actually a very high scoring uh, line for white statistically, but c3, a bit of a rare choice compared to c4. And uh, here we see for the first time a uh, en passant. Mm -hmm. Actually, maybe the first time this tournament, I can't remember. En one. passant. Wait, is this the first en passant we've had in live action? I mean, I'm sure it's happened in some games, but maybe we didn't cover it. Must have done. Yeah, I don't remember any Where, en passant. Where's, where's Elias Sports Bureau when you need it tracking every odd stat possible? Is this the first en passant? We talked about en passant when Juven Jun played f5, but we thought it wasn't the right move because if she had played f6, then yeah. you're and, and trying was to not played there. exchange. Yes, you're right. It's not forced the en passant um, somehow. I, I thought it was. Like I, that's what I heard on the internet. There should be like a jingle when it happens, or everyone should just get a free cro croissant. Like croissants should just drop <laughs> from the sky when en passant happens for the first time. But okay. On croissant it is. Sorry, David, continue. On croissant, uh, in honor of the upcoming Paris Olympics, he takes f6 here. Uh, black recaptures, and uh, okay, white puts pressure in the center. There is actually a pin uh, along the e-file, so black's knight has to be really careful where it treads. It drops back defending its bishop. Magnus keeps his bishop intact. And, um, I mean, my opening theory has run out a long, long time ago, but uh, here it seems both players relatively well prepared. They've both spent just over 10 minutes um, on the clock. I'm a bit nervous initially uh, for white due to the fact the queen is stared down by the black rook, but no tactics in sight here. It looks like white will happily um, put a bishop on e3 in the near future, maybe uh, put his knight on g3. I'm slightly biased towards white's position because white has a safer king. Black has only two pawns as shelter. Um, watch out for some tactics along this diagonal in the near future. But uh, black's piece is very active for now, centralization. Uh, Very active, and I keep staring at bishop g4 because I don't like much the e5 tension for white. I know you can play knight to e3 or bishop to e3, but it's uh, it's slightly uncomfortable, I think, the pins. And how would you follow up, Hannah, if I did, for example, uh, block with the bishop? I see the bar slide. Knight to e5, am I getting the f3 knight? Yeah, that might, that might force white to come back to d2 with the knight to avoid double pawns, potentially, unless unless you're not worried about the double pawns. Half of these positions, that's the battle, or at least where the prep goes deeper than what we're doing up here as commentators. They're, they're aware that they can allow an exchange there and maybe tuck the king to h1 and ultimately use the g-file for white when you start thinking about an attack against the black king. So, um... Okay. Yeah, this, this is interesting, and, and I will say that there's aggressive intentions, I guess, if you want to say, uh, from, from Prague here. I want to talk about uh, the storyline of Prague beating Magnus and uh, the fact that he was...
from Prague instead of Queen to D7. Can we just back up a couple of moves while we have the analysis up? Because when I initially looked at it, I thought Queen B5, there was Rook takes D4, but, you know, Queen takes C4, there is no Rook takes D8. Or maybe there, maybe there is. Maybe that's the king upon ending. Okay. Okay, I answered my own question. Sorry. We should show it, though. Just like the it's confessional booth, when you start talking yeah. out loud, you solve the problem in your own head. This is the therapeutic aspect of analyzing your variations uh, in uh, in a real-time, out loud fashion. This is a winning king upon ending. Go ahead and keep showing it. Yeah, three versus two. Um, for example, the kings will race towards the center. Um, still some hard work to be done, but I do believe white can actually create um, a pass pawn, or at least a distraction. Um, at some point you'll push the g pawn, uh, then the f pawn, and three versus two. Um, we could play this to the end, but I trust the eval bar here. It feels yep. like the extra pawn does work, despite the fact that g pawns are doubled. Um, so interesting, yeah, Prague not taking that risk. Um, just keeping the position intact with queen d7, and if we catch up, this is the current state of affairs. b4 played. B4 is too late, and yeah, I still think with the Queens on, Magnus has winning chances with the Queens off, draw. Um, that's, that's funny, I think we feel that way, we have a little bit of Magnus bias, I just, we think that he is capable of converting these very, very small advantages, but apparently Prague is not feeling this way, he's actually feeling very confident and want to hold this position, and why do I know that? Because he just visited the confession booth a few moments ago, so let's actually, uh, Let's throw to Prague and his thoughts that he just gave us. David. Not out of trouble. Um, Hikaru is a master grinding away these advantages. Oh. And we have a handshake, a draw between Magnus Carlsen and Prague Nananda. That was a very well defended game by the 18 year old Indian prodigy who beat Magnus earlier in the tournament here with the white pieces. And now it's a draw in classical chess leading to another Armageddon. Another Armageddon it is, and uh, Magnus normally the master of grinding it out in those types of games, squeezing water out of a stone, but Prague, more reasons why his future is so bright. Winning with white when they played earlier in the event.